Okay, so today uh, we will be discussing about the defect management. Uh, how uh, how we have to create a defect? Why we create a defect? But before that, have you gone through the this document art, artifact documentation artifact? Uh, any doubt? Because these are very important topic about the test plan test scenario. I've given you assignment. So try to finish this. Um, okay, uh, because this is just an uh, no uh, theoretical part and still it is very important. Like what is the difference between test plan and test strategy? Okay, so that thing you should know. First you will this, uh, learn it, then we will discuss it. Okay, and send it to me in email that what you find like what is test plan and what is test strategy, what is test scenario, if uh, uh, how you have to create your manual test cases, what is test traceability matrix. All these are very important topic. And even though it's like an uh, automation testing interview, they ask you like what you understand with the test plan and test strategy. Okay, so it's very important. Go through it, learn it. And then we will discuss it about in the next class. Okay, so today we will start with the defect management. What do you understand with defect management? Anyone like? Uh, like defect is management. The management is like uh, when we found bugs, uh, like when we are like developing the software. If it's not. Mm meeting the requirements that we want to yeah that so, is bug yeah, yeah that is mm -hmm. that is a bug and defects like then we report to the developers uh, through the mm -hmm. like these tools like ALM and mm -hmm. other tools like I think uh, for manual mm -hmm. postman this kind of postman tool also we use right for reporting no. Postman tool is for the API testing. API that is testing. a different test. Yeah, that is different. Like uh, API testing also, we will uh, give you some idea about the API testing. Why? Because uh, it should be always combination of UI testing, API testing, and little bit of, uh, you know, uh, automation testing. So all these things you should know uh, before going for an interview. But right now, I'm asking about the defect management process. What is like, defect management process here? Yeah, you want to say something? Soon? Yeah, like it's uh, like when we found bug, right? So then mm. we have to report it to the developers and then we have Sorry. to make the report. Like, so it mm. is fixed or not, if, if, if it's not coming in the next build. So mm -hmm. every time we need to check that. Correct, correct. So that you are talking about the defect life cycle. But okay. My question is like, what is defect management? How you are managing your defect? Like what all defects you have uh, uh, like um, reported in your current uh, project that you have to manage it and store it somewhere for the future references. So how there is a defect management person who manages all those defects and uh, make a track and make a you know, document for all those defects so that when we get those defects, a similar type of defect in future, mm -hmm. then we can refer those things, okay? So that is a defect management process that can be defined as a process of uh, detection of bugs, fixing them, and it is necessary to say that the bug occur constantly in the process of software development. So what we have to do, we have to first, there are four uh, main steps. Defect detection, first thing, which uh, uh, Sneha has told, like whatever de whatever defects we have de detected, we have to maintain that. The second thing is formulation of bug reporting. What we have to do, all those defects or bug which we have, uh, uh, no, um, uh, which we have uh, encountered or reported to the developers that we have to maintain it okay then there is a bug fixing okay we will bug we will do the bug fixing and then we will um, uh, do the retesting of those bugs correct 
Then there is bug list creation. Bug list creation is what? Where all the list of bugs which we have uh, 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 which we have created that we have to create a list of it and then store it for the future references. Clear everyone? So that is comes in the defect management, how you are managing all those defects which you have which we have in this project. Okay. Now coming to the um, now coming to the defect life cycle, which is a which uh, what Sneha was telling that once we, we are doing the testing. Okay, once we are doing the testing, what we have to do? We have to file a bug. Okay, that is a new bug. Then what is the next step? We will assign it to some developer. Okay, once we assign it to developer, either that developer accept the bug, like it will be now active because developer has accepted the bug. If developer says that it's not a bug, then it then he has the right to reject the bug or it could be deferred. Okay. Deferred means what? It will be used for the any anyone know what is the what is the meaning of deferred? Yes. What is deferred? Defect. When the bug needs to be uh, resolved in the next cycle. Yes, very good. So that is a deferred bug. When uh, next cycle or later point of time when we introduce those uh, uh, those modules, that time we will be uh, taking care of that defect. It's not a relevant defect for this particular sprint or this particular uh, build. Okay, so that is a deferred bug. Okay, uh, so if the bug is active, then it should be like a uh, fixed. There is there should be one more uh, level here that is fixed. Once it is fixed, it will go for the tester. It, it will uh, move to the tester again. Then tester will test it. After testing, uh, the tester can reopen the defect if it is reproducible or if it is still exist then tester can reopen that defect or if it is verified tester will verify it and then close it okay so this is the happy part like uh, whatever is in green this is the happy part and whatever is like in orange it is like a um, uh, uh, it is like a uh, interview question you can say so because so many things they ask you about like what is rejected defect okay once the developer is not happy with this defect then you can reject but always after rejecting it will come to the tester and tester has all the rights to reopen that defect if uh, like you have to discuss it with the the, with the with your uh, the test lead or test manager that no this defect is uh, still exists so all these questions they ask you in the interview okay sometimes they give you some scenario like uh, so you have raised a defect then uh, um, developer said that it's not a defect and he rejected it but you still feel that it's a defect then what you will do what you will what is your plan of action so can you answer this question like what what should be your plan of action if developer has rejected your defect we should talk to the like uh, the senior of our team that testing is. teams right then we that just is. schedule a meeting with them mm -hmm. Yeah, you should discuss should, it with your managers and we should, uh, we should discuss. Yeah, we should ask yes, why we, the developer is rejecting. Why, what is the justification? Hmm. Maybe yeah. if he says that the scenario is not valid, we tested hmm. an invalid scenario, and uh, if that is a, uh, is a valid justification, then we have to accept it. Hmm. Right? So, Either way, it can go. Correct. Correct. So, 
either way it is good like uh, if if it is a valid scenario like whatever uh, developer is saying is a valid scenario then you have to accept the rejected uh, defect but if you wanted to put your point if you wanted to say that no this is uh, whatever developer is saying is not a valid thing i am i have some then you have to put the proofs screenshots that this is a valid defect and uh, and whatever uh, like this is the way i can reproduce the defect okay then your answer should be like you should go to the higher management then the next encounter question from the interviewer will be like if uh, your manager is also saying that it's not a defect then what he will do still you thinks that you are right and uh, your manager is not understanding your point of view then what you will do so we can provide the uh, provide the test results mm -hmm. the the in, the so the, the so when we prepare the test cases mm -hmm. we will specify the scenario we will be giving the input values and we will be getting some output results and uh, we can show the difference between the actual expectation and uh, the expected uh, the expected result and the actual result and mm -hmm. show the evidence that uh, not working mm -hmm. uh, that way we can show the validity correct. of it. correct so keep on telling that what is your uh, unless until you are satisfied that uh, you have explained it fully okay so unless until uh, you you are like uh, uh, no clear with your thoughts and clear with your uh, you know ideas that this is a way it should work uh, that till that time you will keep on explaining to your higher management okay so this is will be the answer for that okay so clear to everyone pramila are you getting what i what we are discussing like at least at least this part of yeah yeah yes sir yeah, yes. yeah. No. okay yeah. okay so this is the uh, bug life cycle which is very important and uh, it's very you know um, very famous question for uh, interviewers okay now coming to the a few interview questions which are uh, which i have uh, you know uh, just listed down and just go through it and there are there are like uh, different levels of manual testing different levels of manual testing which we have already done in our uh, you know uh, in this class so uh, go through that i have given some new questions also like what is alpha testing what is beta testing uh, what is quality control okay so go through these questions if you have any doubt we can discuss it in the next class okay so uh, what is black box testing we have covered what is test plan uh, we will discuss this okay because i wanted to uh, i wanted you to uh, explore it as it is a very easy thing and easily available in the google so just go through it verification validation all these are very important interview question so just go through it okay if you have any doubt you can always come to me for the discussion okay now coming to the next top next topic which is uh, today's topic which we are going to start is our java portion okay so so today we will be starting our java which is a uh, which is core java uh, so about the little bit history of the java java programming language was originally developed by the um, microsoft and uh, by james roslin in 1996 okay. so previously it is also called as oak 
and uh, now it is called as Java. Okay, you can go through that history. And these are all the different features of Java. You have to go through it. I will provide this PPT to you. You can go through it like all the, you know, it's a pro. Java is a platform independent. It's an object oriented programming language. What is object oriented? We will learn like this, those are OOPS concepts that we will learn in detail in this uh, code Java. Uh, it is platform independent. What is platform independent? Like once you have developed your program in one, uh, one platform and if you try to execute your test case, uh, execute your program in any other environment, any other platform, so it will be, uh, you can able to run those things. That's why Java is so much popular because it's a platform independent. It is very simple because it has a basic concept of OOPS. OOPS is object oriented programming language. Okay. It's very secure. Okay. It's, uh, um, it has very security features. So that's why it is very secure, architecture neutral. Uh, all those things are like simple things which you can easily go through it and understand that it's very, uh, you know, object file. Uh, we use those simple things in uh, running those uh, Java programs. So that's why it is very easy to use portable, robust, multi-threading, it has a high performance, distributed dynamic. So all these are the uh, features of uh, Java. That's why it's very popular. Okay, and go through it. And uh, uh, what is the architecture of uh, Java? Like what is JDK, JRE, JVM? Anybody know about these things? What is JDK? JDK is a Java development kit. This is a Java development kit, whole kit, which we download in our system to execute the Java programs, okay? So it is very important once you are, you know, um, once we have started uh, uh, writing our Java programs, okay? Like, so from, we'll start from a simple program, like welcome word or those, everything which is very simple but you should know the architecture of a, a language before entering into the program okay that how your uh, how your program actually work okay so for that you should know the architecture of a uh, any language okay so that that is jdk is a combination of jre plus development tool. What is development tool? Development tools are Java, Java C. Java C is a Java compiler and Java docs. So these are all the Java tools. Uh, Java C is used for the how, how we compile our program. So all these are development tools. Okay. JRE, what is JRE? J JRE is Java Runtime Environment which has Java runtime environment has packages and classes that we will learn like what is package, what is classes. But inside this Java runtime environment, JRE, these are the things like packages, libraries, all those libraries, which is helping us to run those programs. Okay, so those are included in JRE and then we have a JVM, Java Virtual Machine. In Java Virtual Machine, so this is JRE is a combination of this package, libraries, and virtual machine. Java Virtual Machine is what? We have class loaders, memory areas, and executable execution engine. Okay. So all these are JVM, Java Virtual Machine. Why it is said virtual? Because we can only imagine that we have not seen these things like memory areas. We, we cannot see that those memory areas, we can just visualize this. Okay. So all those class loaders, memory areas, execution engine, all those are virtual, virtually available in our system. Okay. 
are you clear with this any doubt it's it's important to understand the architecture before you no know, jumping into the uh, coding part okay okay mm -hmm. so as i told you the java is an object oriented programming language so these are all the object uh, or you can say oops concept object classes you know methods those are all the oops concept for uh, sorry those are all the oops concepts okay so we will go very slow okay so first uh, first oops concept is object okay an object is a instance of a class okay anybody know what is object in a simple language yes anything that you can touch or feel correct so that is an object and c as well c as well hmm. yes so object is an instance of a class and object is like a uh, you can say that uh, whenever you see some object you will see that what all are the uh, their characteristics like what is the color of that object you no know? suppose you see a dog you see that that dog is white or brown or black anything then you see see the name name or breed of that dog so those are the state different states of that particular object state means their uh, color name breed as well as their now there is a behavior behavior is like barking eating sleeping these are all the behavior these are um, the characteristics of the particular object now we will be learning these objects and classes again and again in our uh, in our course but just to give you a rough idea or the uh, you know real time world idea that these are the objects now coming to the class class is what class is the template or a blueprint that describes the behavior of the uh, um, behavior of your particular uh, state of the of that object okay suppose the state of the object is what color okay now color or you know um, um, breed then what will be the uh, blueprint for that particular thing that is class okay so suppose the class is a dog and inside this dog you can have those characteristics as well as your states okay so these are all the characteristics which is uh, which i gave it as a method so these are all created as a method and these are all created as a variable okay so to understand that what is the class inside the class you can have all those uh, states of the object and methods of that object okay now coming to the data type before that we will learn um we will download the java okay so how you will download the java in your system also i will send you the video that how you will download i'll just show you go to the google Oops, open one then you have to search for the jdk downloads okay this download it uh, just you get this uh, www.oracle.com okay here you have to download your java version okay so if you are a linux uh, my operating system or mac or windows so you have mostly like i am i am a 
Windows uh, operating system. So I will download this one, this latest one. So what is what I will not download? Why? Because I've already have downloaded. So what you will do? You will download it and then uh, okay. First thing, uh, do you have everyone have Java in their system? How you will find that you have Java or not? You just go to command prompt. See that Java space hyphen version. Okay. So you will see that Java version is there in your system. So can you just check that check in your system that you have Java or not? Can you check and let me know? Yeah, I have yeah. 1.8.0 underscore 231. You have Java? Okay. Yeah, but the version is 1.8.0. 1.8.0, which is like uh, either 11 or 18 version you should have. It, I think you have older version, right? Hmm. Yeah, might be. I yeah. I downloaded the latest version. Still, it shows um this as one point eight point zero. Uh -huh. The the so, the latest so, is seventeen, right? Uh, latest is eighteen. But 18. why we download? Yeah, why we download eleven? Because when we go through Jenkins and uh, Maven and Jenkins, uh, version eleven is supported nicely so that's why we prefer to download either 18 or 11. so shall we uh, uh mm -hmm. the version 15 eclipse is it okay 15 one yeah for right now it is good but maybe in later point of time you have to change it but mm -hmm. it's okay 15 is fine so you uh, okay. you are actually uh, going with Eclipse or IntelliJ uh, in anything or uh, it should be Eclipse. Eclipse. So, so yeah, that will be Java 18 compatible with Jenkins, right? That's what you're saying. Right. Okay. Right. Correct. So once you are like, uh, uh, we were be like uh, heading towards like uh, all those test ng frameworks and all those things that time, like 11 or 18 will be good. But right now, it's fine with your 15 version is also good. Whatever uh, we are uh, learning right now. Maybe once you have understood, again, you can uh, install Java. Okay. 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 I have, uh, yes, Hitesh, you are saying something? So I got Java version is 18.02.1. Yeah. Yeah, then it is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so that is, then it is fine. 11 and 18 are uh, good. Uh, so Prabila, if you don't have, then we can connect one-on-one -on -one and I will help you on installing the Java. You have? You have uh, no, no, sorry, I don't have actually. Okay, I can download later, no problem. Yeah, I'll send you one link, which mm -hmm. is helping you to download the Java version, uh, Java. And okay. then if you are okay, then it's fine. Uh, otherwise, we will connect uh, one on one. Okay, okay. No, so, you, you send you me send the me, link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please send me that link to me as well. The Java right version. Yes, yes. I will send it in the group only mm -hmm. about uh, all those links and uh, uh, how to install it. Yeah. Okay. And you have to install two things. Like uh, once you are done with the uh, done with your java you have to install the eclipse so i'll sending the two uh, videos for installing java as well as for installing eclipse okay and you have to do the uh, your environment setup also how to do the environment setup i'll just give you a brief uh, introduction about that like go to the search right environment everything is given in that video also okay i'll be sending just I'm showing you, like you have to edit the environment variables, okay? Edit the system environment variables. Here you have to go, okay? In the environment variables and here you have to add the 
path. This is the Java home environment path, which is a JDK. Okay. Uh, here uh, you have to add this uh, this path and also this uh, first you have to add java home here and then path in that video it is uh, uh, properly given so all these two things you have to change it then only your setup will be ready for the java okay we will do that. Uh, don't worry and don't get confused. If we, if you have any doubt, we will uh, do that in the next class. I will share those two links to uh, two videos with you. Okay. So first thing is once you have done with your uh, download, just open your ID Eclipse Eclipse ID. So this is the way it should open. If you have installer and all those things, then it will be not working properly. So IDE will should be there. And uh, okay, so I'll close all these two things. Okay, so this is the so this is the file where you can go and uh, create your new project. Okay, so this is the Java project. I will click on this Java project. I will write uh, batch nine. Okay, this is the new project I'm creating. I just gave the project name here. And uh, you can see that, you know, this is uh, the Java JDK 16 I have used, I'm using. It's all those information it is given here. So yeah, Java, I see one point eight, JRE, JDK sixteen. Okay. Okay. So let it be like this only. Okay. Next, go to next, and then just finish it. You can finish it like this only. Uh, I don't want to give any module name, so I have to don't create it. So this is the new Sammy, project. You are, which is, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, you are using yes. version 16 instead of 11, yeah. right? Because the JDK was Yeah, 16. instead of 11. Yeah, JDK uh, was 16. So should we not download 11 then? Yeah, I mean... I mean, I don't know, like uh, 11, I think I was using 11, but it was changed to 16, how it, I don't know. So I have to check there, check that and I will let you know. But 11 and 18 is the uh, two versions, which is, uh, which we are using. So I have to check that. But you should Sorry, uh, yeah, download please. 11 only. Okay. 11 okay. only, it will be good for you. Okay. I will check this why it is showing 18. Okay, so I think anything is fine if we are going in the in the initial days, but later point of time when we are doing some, uh, you know, uh, Jenkins and Maven uh, CI CD things, that time it will be uh, it it will be good that you have uh, eleven and eighteen version. Okay, but initially right now whatever you have. You can go through it. Uh, you can start start it. Okay. Now, what? Once your project is done, go to the SRC folder, which is a source folder. Right click there. Go to new and create one package. Always before creating your class, you should have a. Uh, you should always have a practice to create a package. Package is for what? Your uh, Java programs or anything any suitable name you can give to your package okay now the package is created this is a package and now what we have to do we have to give the class name so class name is what dot java 
okay so this is like relevant to your relevant to your uh, um, like what you are doing like suppose i am writing such i am just printing hello world in this uh, program so i will write the that name okay so what is this this is like a rows folder which is your uh, project name this is your package name okay this is your name which you have given uh, modifiers which we will learn like these are all different modifier public uh, private protected uh, these are all uh, modifiers abstract final static we will learn about all those things in detail okay uh, this is your super class interface keep it like this which method so here you have to include your main method okay so public static void main string argument so this is like a standard way of writing a main method okay um, what is main method from where you start your execution like compiler will search for this main method and then it will start execution from that point of time okay now go to finish and we will have a hello word dot java file so this is a class okay so this is a this is your class and uh, inside that class you have methods which is a main method and then if you want to print hello what you have to do so uh, system dot out dot print ln so this is the uh this is like for the printing of your uh, anything which you want to print in java you have to write system dot out dot print ln okay okay so this is a program which we have written and how what to how to compile it we have to go to run java programs and this is like whatever you have uh, given in your program in the console console is what your result okay so this is a console this is getting in your console this is a very simple program which is just printing your whatever you are writing okay so um, at least you should know that in the this main program like whenever you are executing your program it will the compiler search for this main method and this main whatever is inside this main method it will execute okay clear everyone yeah yes sir okay yeah okay so just a uh, uh, few assignments like uh, first you have to install and uh, install java install eclipse ready with your setup okay and uh, then we will uh, go on with the uh, with the uh, our programming back to the ppt like what are what is data types anyone know what is data types data types is like Uh, where you store your variables right so variables is what like suppose you are giving variables uh your inside your main method you are writing uh integer a equal to 10 okay so that means you are defining a variable this is a variable correct So A is a variable, and you are giving some data type to that variable. So these are all the different data types like byte, short, int, long, float, double, boolean, character, string. So these are different type of data type. So here I have given integer. You can give. You can give long also. Long b equal to ten. now you have to this is your assignment that you have to find that what is the difference between uh, all these variables all these data types okay 
just a minute give me 5 minutes of break is that yeah sure so character is like uh, alphabets a b c d like that string is like a like uh, words you know, sentence sentences right the group of alphabets you can say correct so all those things are you can you learn it uh, if there is any doubt come come to me we, we can discuss it okay so these are all different types of data types then comes the method what is method Uh, anyone know what is method? Method is a is a block of code. Okay, like uh, like as I told you, method is a blueprint where you write all everything about your object, your uh, you know characteristics of your uh, object, everything. So you can pass data uh, known as parameters. Yeah, with, the, with method, you can pass the parameter also into the method. Method are used to perform certain action. Suppose you have to do addition of two numbers. So what you will create? You will create one method, add. Inside that, you can pass two parameters of like A and B. Uh, give the value to A, give the value to B. And then you can add those things, save those uh, addition of two numbers into the C variable and then print that C, correct? So these are all the, uh, these are, uh, these are the method which you, uh, which you used for doing the calculations and all those like uh, things which, uh, which you wanted to do in your, in your method, like in your project, whatever things you have to do, you have to create a one method and then do that calculation inside that method. Okay, so this is also called as function. Okay, function also it is called method too. But for like C, C++, they call it as function. But in Java, those functions are called as methods. Okay. Um, then comes the access specifiers. This is also very important interview question. Like what all the what, what all is access specifier? What do you mean by access specifier? So the access specifier is the access which you give to your variable, which you give to your methods, okay? So if you give a public access to your method, that means your method, you can use it at any point of, like in your package, outside your package also, you can use it. If you, if it, in those project, in that project, like suppose, Mm, you know, mm, this is our project, correct? And we have created one package here. We can create another package also, right? We can create one more package, which is like, suppose this is Java programs. I've written here uh, Selenium program, okay? Selenium programs. Okay, so this is the Two package I have created inside one project, correct? So this is a two packages which we have created. And if it is public, okay, so public, then it can be accessed, uh, accessible inside the class, accessible within the, uh, within inside the subclasses. Okay, subclasses also we will learn in later point of time inside the same package, accessible outside the package, accessible within the subclass outside the package, okay? So there are outside the package means what? There are two packages. The in, If it is a public method, we can use this. Uh, this is a public method, right? And we can create your own method also. We will learn it in later point of time. When we create our own method, and if that method is public, we can use it. We cannot use this main method in other classes. Why? Because it's only um, inside this uh, 
particular class, but if we create another method, okay, suppose we have created one method which is public, um, public, uh, okay, void add. Okay, so this is a method. Okay, okay, this method should be closed first. The main method is closed. Okay, now this is a method which is public, and this is uh, a add method. So that method can be accessible inside this other package also, which is a Selenium program package. Sorry. So Selenium program package inside that also you can use it. How you have to use it? You have to import these package. So that we will learn later point of time. But the first thing is, if it is public, it can be accessed uh, in all these things. Okay, accessible inside the class, accessible in outside the class also, outside the package also, is outside uh, within the class of outside package also. Okay, so if it is public, it can be accessed everywhere. Okay, second thing is private. Private means it can only accessible inside the class okay so this is a private method which is accessible only inside the class okay so uh, if we go through here so if this is an private okay private variable if it is a private variable it cannot be inside a uh, um, inside a main method it can always be outside okay because main method is public so public is whatever is inside it it's all all will be public only so if you want to create any private method it should be always a outside the class outside the main method okay so if it is a private integer okay private integer variable then it can only be accessed inside this class. Okay, you cannot access it outside the class. Clear? Uh, accessible inside the class only. Okay. Protected. Protected is accessible inside the class, accessible within the subclass inside the same package. Okay, so protected, we can accessible inside the uh, inside the package only so this is a package inside that only we can have uh, many uh, many classes and that there only we can access this uh, protected variable okay and there is one default default is also same accessible within the subclass inside the same package okay once you will learn it no uh, we will go through all what is sub classes then you will be more clear about this uh, this thing okay but it is important to know that these are these are the um core access specifier clear any doubt in this like like you must be having some doubt but uh, at least you understand that these are all the these are the four access specifiers okay Chavi, so what is this accessible within the subclass and outside the package? Last one? Yeah. Yeah, so accessible within the subclass. Within the subclass means? Uh, subclass you will learn. Like there are two classes. Uh, here there is one class, right? But you can have more classes, subclasses. Subclass is what? Once you create a class, inside that there is one more class. Okay, so that is called a subclass. So you can access in that subclass also and inside the same package. Uh, this is a outside the package. Okay, so inside that, if I created one more method, so you so that uh, public will be accessible there also. Okay, there are two packages. Whatever program, uh, whatever uh, classes I have written in Java program, if I 
use those classes in selenium program that means it's it outside that package you understood whatever programs whatever you know dot java classes i have written in java program and if i am using it in selenium program that means those are outside the package are you understanding this one yeah 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 so that is uh, if you are trying to use it in selenium program package that means it's outside that package so the, within the subclass subclass we will learn later point of time like uh, within the subclass but outside the package subclass means you have the same class name but you have an you have this in another um, package I know oh, so we really can have the same same class name in mm. a different package as well yes yes we can have that uh, but different package yeah so that you can have same class same in different package you can have yeah and then you can use it those things uh, those uh, methods if it is a public public or protected that then you can use it yeah you will learn it in later point of time right now you can you this much is only enough for you that there are four access specifier and public has all the rights to use it anywhere but private don't have this two things if you remember then also it's fine okay public and private but protected and default are also access specifier that you should know right now okay is that clear till here it is clear only this much can we move on yeah lenu neha yeah. from la are you clear you are good okay. yes okay okay yeah so what is the difference between uh, defect error bug that we will do in the next class why because uh, i want to discuss few things uh, about the timings before that everyone uh, know leave so i just stop recording